Old Man Logan has been around for quite some time, and due to his popularity, brought into the main universe, and then allowed to return to his universe. But he was already old, he already didn't have a healing factor. How did he die? This is the comic story in general where I take some of your favorite trade paperbacks and single issues and I break them down into digestible bites, then I read them dramatically back to you. All alterations to the panel, text, and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. Today is another one of our full stories in which we grab a bunch of our older videos that are located in a playlist and turn it into one convenient video for you. Today we're going to be bringing you the 12 issue maxi series Dead Man Logan, which picks up right after Old Man Logan went back to the wastelands of his own future. And from there, well, he needed to atone for his sins as he was dying. If you guys enjoyed this, please consider hitting that like button. Don't forget to smash the subscribe button and check us out over at Patreon where you can vote on the next videos we do right here. Along the mountains of Fort Wells, Canada, the snow begins to cover the remains of the nearly frozen Logan. He would remain there if it wasn't for Cecilia and a few others finding him, along with the beheaded maestro. Cecilia says that there is a faint pulse, but Logan is going to need immediate medical attention. Glob looks over and says that that's not a Hulk, right? Because he looks like a Hulk. Forge kneels down, wiping the snow off, stating that it sure looks like it's a Hulk. Whatever it is, it's dead now. Must have been one hell of a fight. As time passes, Logan wakes up on the operating table, quickly popping his claws, ready to kill something. Cecilia tells him to relax. He's in a safe place. They're actually back at the X Mansion. Nothing but friends here. Logan asks, How long? And Cecilia looks into her clipboard, telling him 11 days. Does he, uh, mind putting the claws away? As Logan retracts his claws, he sits back up on the table, and Cecilia says that his Regenix readings have spiked. His healing factor is trying to stop it from tearing away at his organs, while also trying to combat the adamantium poisoning. So she's going to assume that he took another dose of Regenix after she told him that it would do this to his system. Logan tells her that he needed it to take down the maestro. He couldn't do it without his healing factor. But Cecilia says that that is besides the point. He overloaded his healing factor. His system is done. His healing factor can't keep up. By her estimates now, he has roughly 12 months to live. Logan gets up and he leaves, putting his jacket on and Glob asks, where is he going? Logan asks, when you found me, did you happen to find a backpack lying around? Glob says they did. He can get it, but... Logan takes the bag, telling him that he has lived longer than most. Hasn't always been good. But the good times make up for the bad. But he's ready to move on. Be with his wife and kids. He just needs to settle a couple of things first, though. Make sure he lives this world a little better than he found it. Which happens to bring Logan to the bar with no name. Throwing the bouncer through the window. As he walks in, he tells everyone that the first one who can tell him where Mysterio is gets to walk out of here in one piece. Everyone else is going to get their ass kicked. The D-list villains tell him that they ain't snitches, so Logan pops his claws, telling him that he did warn them. He rips, he tears his way through the crowd as Miss Sinister sips her wine, stating that the testosterone here is so thick you could cut it with a chainsaw. Logan looks over. This isn't your usual scene. All these low lives are nobodies. She says that she was out looking for some bad guys, though after seeing this, they might not be bad enough for her tastes. Logan begins to walk away, stating that if he had thought for a second that she knew where Mysterio was, she'd be a pile of meat on the ground like the others. Once Logan leaves, Miss Sinister grabs a knife, telling one of the villains that she isn't quite impressed. All that, and he didn't say anything. A lot of little secrets locked up in that head of his. The man asks why he can't move, and Miss Sinister stabs him, telling him, Because I don't want you to. But it's okay. I'm a telepath. Gives me an unfair advantage. Logan makes his way to New York, and that's where he hopes to find clues as to where Mysterio could have gone. But as he searches for one of Mysterio's old lairs, a voice tells him that Mysterio hasn't been there for more than a year. Hawkeye walks out with his arms up laughing. Ha! <laughs> Looks like I got the drop on Logan, huh? Logan tells him that he picked up his scent about a mile back. You smell like Axe body spray, coffee, and desperation. Hard to miss. Hawkeye clears his throat. Anyway, isn't this a bit outside of your wheelhouse? Mysterio is usually Spider-Man's problem or Daredevil's. Logan ignores him, but Hawkeye says, Look, I know where Mysterio is, but before I can say, you're going to have to fess up as to why you're looking for him. Logan turns to leave, telling him, That's my problem. Doing it my way and... Hawkeye stops him. Look, can't we just skip this? We've done it before. I'm going to pester you over and over until you finally get annoyed and spill the beans. Logan pauses and considers it. Fine. 
in my timeline Mysterio, nearly every single superhero, X-Men, Avenger, were killed, and the blood is on my claws. Mysterio made me think that I was protecting them, but I was really killing them. Can usually see past the illusion, but this... This cost everyone their lives. After that, the world fell apart, which that day has already passed here. But if Mysterio could do that in my timeline, well, we have to make sure that he can't hear. A short while later, Mysterio is lounging in his mansion as a beautiful woman asks if he'd like more wine or perhaps something else. Mysterio smiles, and Miss Sinister tells him that this is really pathetic. The illusion fades as Mysterio sits up in his wheelchair asking who is she. You're not supposed to be... Miss Sinister tells him that she came to take him away from this place, though now she's starting to have second thoughts. Mysterio tells her, No, I'm where I belong. I'm done with that life. Let me just live out with all the other crazies. In here, there's no Spider-Man, no Daredevil, hell, no Deadpools. Just let me rot in peace. Miss Sinister leans in asking, What if I told you you were meant for greater things, to be the one who finally turns the tide for the villains? I did a little poking around in Logan's head, and it was you who ushered in the new age. Mysterio thinks for a moment and then waves her off, stating that he isn't interested. He is staying. Miss Sinister then asks what if she told him that in about five minutes, Logan was going to come in here and slice him open from stem to sternum. A few moments later at the front desk, Hawkeye tells the receptionist that he is an Avenger and he has to see Quentin Beck. The receptionist asks, really? Who are you again? Hot guy? Hawkeye tries to put the charm on her to get information, but Logan's phone rings and he looks at Hawkeye telling him to just do whatever that is while I take care of this. Glob tells him on the line that they've been trying to get a hold of him. Forge was looking for him, said that he had something to show him. Logan says, right, well, just tell Forge that if he needs me, call directly, but I gotta go. As Hawkeye comes back, he yells that she knew who Stingray was, but not him. That hurts. Later that night, Logan sneaks into the psychiatric ward, stating that he should have done this from the beginning. He just needs to find Quentin and... The woman Mysterio was using for his illusion asks, Quentin? Quentin's gone. Gone, 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 gone. That lady took him. Took him away. Logan asks, does she know where? And another patient tells him that he isn't going to get anything out of her. She's crazy! Hell, they all are! Hawkeye then asks the man, does he know anything? And if he has information? And if that information is valuable, how about they get him a candy bar and a soda? Then they'll talk. So a few moments later, the man is biting on his candy bar, asking, You couldn't have gotten me one without nuts? And Hawkeye tells him that he should have been more specific, now talk. Logan sighs, stating, Just get the man a chocolate bar without nuts. Hawkeye grumbles and walks off, and Logan says, Look, I know Miss Sinister came here. What did she say to him? The man tells him that she asked if he wants to kill the X-Men. That's crazy, right? And they left. I guess Mysterio figured it'd be safer to go with that lady. But that's all I know. Hawkeye returns ready to hand over the candy bar, but Logan tells him to throw it away. The guy doesn't deserve it. We need to go. The next morning, in an undisclosed location in the Pacific Ocean, Mysterio follows Miss Sinister, asking if they're in the right place. Where are the guards? Miss Sinister points to one of the lasers, pointing at them, stating that if these people wanted them dead, they'd be dead. Now put your game face on, or whatever you do with that dome. As the door opens, Red Skull's daughter, Sin, asks if this is the man who's going to help her realize her father's dream of killing the heroes and ruling the world. Crossbone yells, Hail Neo Hydra! And shortly after, all the soldiers behind him chant, Hail Neo Hydra! Miss Sinister says, Yes, yes, Hail Neo Hydra, indeed. A little while later, Spider-Man runs around to the corner trying to escape the Neo Hydra agents when suddenly dozens jump out and begin to spray him with bullets. Spider-Man bleeds out, one of the agents says, This is so cool! I honestly thought that was Spider-Man! The illusion fades on the dead prisoner, and Sin asks if he could do that for anyone. Like, if she wanted it to seem like she was killing Captain America, or, I don't know, Magneto? Mysterio says yes, but Miss Sinister says that she didn't bring Mysterio here so that she could blow off some steam with a fantasy kill list. He was the first step in an attack orchestrated by her father to take down all of their enemies in one fell swoop. They can rule together, plenty of land to go around. This way, they can avoid the mistakes made in Logan's reality. Sin asks what sort of mistakes, and Miss Sinister tells her that she was stomped to a pulp by Giant Man day one. Sin yells, all right, let's do this, but first, bring out another prisoner. Make it look like Black Widow. Later that night at dinner, Sin says that they need to look to sell those who have some interest in this. Doom wants a trunk of this new world they're building, but he's gonna have to cough up the dough. 
As she goes on, Miss Sinister shouts that she's being such a child. They are on the eve of one of the greatest victories that either of them will ever see, and she's worried about money? She should start worrying about taking this seriously. And Sin says that her whole life has been about this, about world domination, to outdo what her father couldn't. But who's to say that they can't have a little fun along the way and make some extra cash? Mysterio says that he's not some child's birthday magician. He is a master of illusion. He will be. Crossbones stops him, asking, Are you gonna take your helmet off? How the hell are you supposed to eat? Mysterio says that he's not really hungry, and Crossbones gets up, dragging him off, stating that he and the Master of Illusion are going to visit the little boy's room. He throws Mysterio into the bathroom, stating that they're going to have themselves a little chat. That little display back there with Spider-Man was great and all, but have you even think of trying a stunt like that on us? Mysterio yells that he forgets that they need him. You low-rent Punisher! Without me, you have nothing, so watch your tone when addressing Mysterio. Crossbones gives him one last shove and says that he's been warned. Mysterio then goes into one of the stalls, taking off his helmet, sweating, stating, Damn it, Quentin! What did you get yourself into this time? Meanwhile, over at Forge's lab, Forge tells Logan that he's a hard man to get a hold of, and Logan says that he's been just a little busy. Forge goes on stating that it's not often that they find a piece of machinery that has him stumped. It was quite refreshing. As Logan looks up, he sees what Forge is talking about and says, My God! Hawkeye asks, what is this? Forge says that it's a time-traveling device found in a cave about 100 feet from Logan's big showdown with the Maestro. Logan says that Maestro destroyed it, but Forge tells him no, he damaged it, and now it's fixed. The tech used to make it is incredibly advanced. It took a week to just begin understanding it. Watch. As Forge activates the machine, a portal opens up and Forge tells everyone to follow him. A few seconds later, everyone is now in the wastelands with Hawkeye asking what is this place. Logan looks around. It's home. After a few moments of taking it all in, Logan says that he can't. Not yet. And after returning to Prime Earth, Logan and Hawkeye go back out on the hunt, taking out more and more villains looking for Mysterio, while one of them tells them to hang on. He might be able to help. Hawkeye says, right, as he pulls on his bow, and the man tells him to chill out, Arrow, dude. Logan says that he suddenly knows where Mysterio is hiding, and the man says he always did. Dude owes him money but he's starting to think that Mysterio won't be able to pay him. Figured if he won't pay, that they might be for a chance to know where he's at. So, are you two willing to pay up? Later, as Logan and Hawkeye walk through Times Square, Hawkeye asks, Really? This seems a bit much for their man. Logan tells him, Look, this didn't happen to you. So maybe it's hard for you to understand, but the things that Mysterio did, the guilt that I've had to carry, just get to the other side of the street. I'll flank him on both sides. When Logan looks up, he sees the Sinister Six and says, Of course Mysterio brought a crew. Not that that's going to help him. Logan takes up the Regenix vial, injecting himself, stating that he knows that this is killing him. But without it, his healing factor is shot. Can't risk letting Mysterio get away. This'll just be the last one, because after this, he won't need it. Logan charges in headfirst at Mysterio, but Hawkeye yells for him to wait! It's a trap! And Taskmaster blocks Logan's attack, telling him, Stop! We don't want to hurt you! But as we see Hawkeye's point of view, Cap pushes Logan back, stating, But we will if we have to, Logan. Logan swings again, telling them not to think. He won't kill them if they just let him get to Mysterio. He then leaps over everyone, but what he sees is Beetle flying up at him, taking him into the sky. In reality, it's Iron Man, and he's asking, What is it this time? Mind control? Are you on drugs? It's the bath salts, right? Just a matter of time before a mutant gets his hands on that stuff. Logan stabs into Iron Man's arm, ripping off some of the armor, telling them, You're delaying the inevitable! Meanwhile, over in a penthouse watching the fight, Sin says that this is so much better than she was expecting. If she'd known that Mysterio could do this, she would have brought him in years ago. So much better than cosmic cube nonsense and stuff like that that her dad was on about. Back on the ground, Hawkeye runs over to everyone, stating, Logan doesn't know what he's doing! We've been hunting Mysterio because he thinks that Mysterio is going to do something like this. He did something like this in the world that this old Logan came from. Cap says, You think Mysterio's doing this to Logan again? And Hawkeye tells him, We never found him! Mysterio went into hiding! But I think he found us. Logan claws away at more armor, with Iron Man pushing him up using his thrusters to shock Logan in an attempt to stun him. Logan then begins to laugh, Ha! You have to try better than that! And Iron Man radios in asking, Is there uh, any chances of assistance up here? She-Hulk jumps onto Ghost Rider's car and the two begin to drive up a nearby building. She jumps off using the momentum, cracking Logan in the head, launching him back to the ground. 
back over at the Xavier Institute for Mutant Education and Outreach. Glob sees a news report about the fight and runs out of his room yelling, no, 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 no. He runs into Jubilee's office yelling that they have a major issue. Logan is fighting the Avengers. She sighs, stating that they do not need this right now. A whole new Avengers versus X-Men. What the hell is Logan thinking? Well, Logan had us prepare for this. He knew it was coming. That's why he was hunting Mysterio. Back in Times Square, Cap looks over asking, is he? And She-Hulk looks back stating, Hulk squash beauty Canadian, make you road pancake. Logan groans and then swipes at She-Hulk's ankle, getting up stating, no more. I'm done playing with the Sinister Six. You can't protect Mysterio. He charges towards what he thinks is Mysterio, grabbing him, getting ready to bury his claws. But Hawkeye calls out for him to stop. Three arrows shoot into Logan's back. And Hawkeye tells him, please don't make me do this. Logan turns his attention to Hawkeye, and Sin bursts out laughing. This is on every news channel! As she is watching, Miss Sinister says that she really hopes the show is worth it. Worth giving up their only chance at ruling the world. This is starting to get a little too stupid. Sin follows her out of the room stating, Wait, hey, sure, this looks like we're screwing around, but what we're planning, it's huge. Miss Sinister says that this isn't how it was supposed to work. Right now, they're supposed to be working with Doom, Kingpin, Magneto, and the others. They should have been following the blueprint. But right now, she's like a child on the new toy, running off, shooting her gun so that everyone knows that she has it. There is no recovery from this. You had one shot and you ruined it, Sin. Sin asks what is her problem. They still have Mysterio. It's their secret weapon. Miss Sinister says that in Logan's future, the future where they were successful, her dad killed Mysterio after all was said and done. He killed him so that Mysterio couldn't do the same to them. Sin sighs, stating that she's right. She just forgot us all. Now she's off to grab some more beer. Does she want anything? Miss Sinister pauses for a moment and says that she will take a Pinot Noir. The higher the cost, the better. As Sin leaves, Mysterio's illusion of her fades and he says that he knew it. Back outside, Ghost Rider drives his car into Logan, with Logan jumping on the hood beginning to tear it apart stating that that is a pretty sweet ride. Jack-o-lantern, what's under the hood? As the two crash, Logan jumps onto what he thinks is Jack-o-lantern and then stops. The illusion fades and he sees Ghost Rider asking, uh, How? No, this isn't. But before he could say another word, he collapses. Cap runs up telling Ghost Rider that he stopped him, and Ghost Rider tells him, I didn't do anything! That! Cecilia and the other mutants walk up stating that it was them. They got it from here, though. Cap tells him, Now hold up a minute! Logan just tore up all of Times Square and nearly killed Iron Man. We're not gonna let him be taken. Jubilee says that Logan had them prepare for this eventuality. They're going to deal with him. Cap begins to tell them that this is bigger than the X-Men. He is a danger, and they can't just let him go like this. As Glob and the others assist getting Logan secure, Jubilee says that they have an obligation to Logan. They're going to do everything in their power to ensure that this never happens again. While the mutants leave, Iron Man asks if they're really going to let this happen, and Cap says that they're not going to set off another Avengers vs. X-Men war right now. No one wants that. Hawkeye then says that he'll go with the mutants to see what the failsafe is and keep an eye on things. And over in an alleyway, Mysterio sits and he's watching. Over in Forge's lab, Logan floats in a rejuvenating tube and Glob asks if he's okay in there. Jubilee says not to worry, it's Logan, he always bounces back, but Cecilia says actually, he's not doing that great. Logan's healing factor has slowed down considerably, worse than when she examined him a few days ago. He's killing himself and he knows it. Meanwhile, over in Hawkeye's apartment in Brooklyn, Hawkeye grabs a pot of coffee off the burner stating that he needs some of that sweet, sweet life juice. But just then, he drops the pot as Mysterio climbs in through his window, asking, What the hell are you doing here? Mysterio tells him, Hold on, hold on. I didn't come to fight. I came to get help. I came to help. Wait, no, that's a lie. I need your help. Hawkeye slowly lets go of an arrow, asking, Really? How stupid do you think I am? Mysterio takes off his helmet, telling him, Look, look, they're going to kill me. They wanted to use me and then toss me out like common trash. Hawkeye tells him, you really know how to pick your friends. And Mysterio scoffs, telling him, they are not my friends, they forced me into this! I just want out of this madness! Back over at the lab, Logan wakes up hearing Jubilee coming in. He asks how many people did he kill, and she tells him, thankfully, none. But some of them had to go to the hospital. Nothing too serious. Logan takes the towel, stating that he was stupid. He ran headfirst in like that. The amount of noise that he was making, of course Mysterio would have known where he was at. A lot of people could have gotten hurt, Jubilee. 
As he gets dressed and heads in with the others, Cecilia says that she can't believe him, even after she warned him. I'm not going to apologize. I know that I'm dying. Been a long time coming. If it means that I gotta speed it up just to do this one last thing, then that's the price I'm willing to pay. Cecilia sighs, stating that she isn't going to argue with him. That 12 months, he's got six now. And if he takes Regenix again, less. Just then Hawkeye walks in stating, all right, before anyone gets any ideas, let me explain things. And behind him, another Jubilee walks in stating, hi, and Logan immediately lunges for her. Mysterio drops the illusion yelling, hey, wait, just listen for a moment. And Mysterio tells him, it's okay. Mysterio is here to help us. Just hear him out. If you don't like what he has to say, then you can kill him, Logan. As the team flies in, Mysterio says that he told them everything. Why do you need to take me on this suicide mission? As the jet begins to land, Logan tells him, because we don't trust you. I'm keeping you close so that if it looks like you lied, I get to claw punch you to the brain and dump your body in the ocean for the sharks. As the jet begins to land on the Neo Hydra base, the defense cannons begin to fire hitting a wing, sending the jet into a spin. It crashes into the waters and Neo Hydra quickly begins to jump into their boats to investigate. One agent looks over trying to see what's going on and at that moment a fist shoots up from the water and Logan's claws stab right into him. While Logan and the others throw everyone off the boat, Blob says that Kitty is going to murder them. It's like the third Blackbird that they've lost in months. As Logan drives the boat in, he and the others jump off, carving their way through until every last agent is dead. Inside, Mysterio walks in and Sin tells him, Well, 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 look who decided to come crawling back! Crossbones grabs his rifle, stating, I knew that we should have put this clown down when we had a chance! And Mysterio shouts, telling them, Listen! Logan is here, and he brought back up! Miss Sinister says, oh my, who could have seen this coming? Not like I didn't warn you that we only had one shot. As Sin and Crossbones get ready to engage Logan, Miss Sinister begins to follow, but Mysterio whispers to her, telling her to wait. Outside, Logan and Jubilee walk in and Neo Hydra opens fire. Logan jumps in the way of Jubilee, but as he falls back, the illusion fades and Crossbones coughs. It hurts. Mysterio leans in, telling him, bang, bang. And as Crossbones draws his last breath, Sin screams that he did this to him. Mysterio says, of course I did. I'm not your damn puppet. The real Logan runs around the corner and Forge tells everyone to drop their weapons. No one else has to die today. Sin says that she isn't so sure about that. Pretty sure more people could die today. Ain't that right, boys? As Sin steps into a door, more agents begin to pour out of the door. Jubilee blasts the group, telling Logan to go. They can handle these guys. Don't let Sin get away. As Logan runs off, Hawkeye follows, but Forge throws him a power dampening collar, telling him to make sure to slap that on Miss Sinister before she gets in their heads. As soon as everyone runs through the door, Sin and Miss Sinister open fire. Logan takes a few hits, but then he grabs another vial of Regenix. But before he can inject himself, Sin shoots his hand, destroying it. She asks if he's really shooting up drugs in the middle of a gunfight. Where's the respect? Logan screams as he runs towards Sin, and she begins to shoot, unloading the entire magazine. Logan stumbles to the ground in a pool of his own blood as Hawkeye reaches to help. Logan tells him to go after them. Don't let them get away. Hawkeye hurries off and Logan rolls over with Mysterio telling him that he's looking pretty pathetic right now. Everyone's afraid of you. You're nothing more than a broken man though. Logan swings, but with all of his strength done, Mysterio easily steps out of the way. Mysterio turns his back to him, telling him, This really feels like punching down for me. See ya! Logan throws himself onto Mysterio's back, sending him to the ground, and begins to punch him in the chest over and over again. Logan tells him, 50 years! 50 damn years! I prayed that one day I'd be able to go back in time and do this! I wanted it so bad! So bad! So I wouldn't have to kill my friends! My friends! My family! Mysterio tells him, Please! I'm going to! Logan then pulls back one last time, punching Mysterio through the dome and into his face. As Logan falls back into the wall, Hawkeye comes in, telling him, Gross! You got what you wanted! Do you feel better, Logan? Sin struggles out of Hawkeye's grip, telling him to let her go, and Miss Sinister yells that as soon as she gets this collar off, she will make them bow before her before they kill each other. Soon Jubilee comes in, looking at Mysterio's body. Damn, you really did it, Logan. And as Glob helps Logan to his feet so that they can leave, Mysterio's body soon changes back to its original form as a just generic Neo-Hydra agent. After some time to recover, Logan heads out to San Francisco to meet up with Cap. 
And as Cap looks out onto the waters, he looks back stating that he is on a secret mission. How did he? Logan leans across the railing. I'm good at finding people. But I wanted to come and say that what happened in Times Square, it was a lot to take in. I was so terrified of anything like that happening that I let it blind me. I let the fear drive me right into Mysterio's trap. Nearly killed you all. Cap tells him to try and not get carried away. You left me with some cuts and bruises, but nothing that would have killed us. Hawkeye explained the situation, and though we might not see eye to eye on how we want to handle things, at your core, you're a good man, Logan. We've all made mistakes, made situations worse by trying to make them better. We're human. And that's how we atone for those mistakes that makes and breaks our characters. Logan holds at his hand. I just wanted to say I'm sorry for what happened. Sorry I almost killed you. Cap shakes his hand. You didn't, but apology accepted. Stay safe, Logan. As Logan walks away from the pier, he smells something. He sniffs around, but he can't seem to find it. But later in British Columbia, Mariko Yashida enters her apartment and notices that something is off. She grabs her katana, spinning around the corner, holding the blade to Logan's neck, and Logan tells her, I need your help. Logan leans down to set down his beard. Mariko tells him that if he doesn't use a coaster, she will kill him. She then puts her katana away, asking what does he want. I'm out of the life. No more fighting. No more complicated good guys versus bad guys drama. And Logan tells her, that's why I'm here. He sets out several photos stating that this girl's name is Maureen Bouchard. In the future where he came from, she was his wife. Mariko looks at them stating that she is a kid. And Logan tells her that this is 50 years from now in his time. He puts some money aside and he needs someone to keep an eye on her. His Maureen is gone. He knows that. She lived a difficult life because she was with him. And ultimately, she died to a Hulk because of him. He just wanted to make sure that this little girl doesn't have to grow up to deal with the same things that his Maureen did. Make sure that she has the best life possible, a life removed from everything. Mariko asks, why her though? Logan says because they loved each other at one point. You know the price that comes from being close to me. If anyone knows how to save someone from that grief, it's you. So will you do it for her? Mariko takes the money telling him, of course, and he isn't as terrible a person as he thinks he is. But as Logan leaves the apartment, he stops and he smells the air. He calls out Satan that he knows that they are there. You've been following me. I'm going to the pub down the street to grab a beer, or ten. If you really want to do this, then I'll see you there. A few moments later, as he heads into the bar, the waitress asks what she can get him. Logan tells her two bottles of something cold and Canadian. Someone will be joining him soon. And as he sits, the waitress comes back with two bottles asking if they need glasses. As Logan drinks his beer, he tells her no, they're good. He sets the bottle down and a voice tells him that they aren't sure that this is a good idea. Logan looks back at himself. This world's Wolverine, the current timeline's Wolverine telling him, probably not a good idea that we meet. Sit down anyway. Wolverine takes a seat and old man Logan asks him, how did you find me? Wolverine tells him, I'm good at finding people. Logan takes another drink and he says, You know, that really does make me sound like a jackass. And Wolverine tells him, I wanted to see if you were the real deal. See if this wasn't some kind of a clone or an LMD running around. You smell right to me. After a few moments of silence, Wolverine asks if he's really from the future. How did it all go for them? Logan thinks about what he should talk about. If he should explain that he killed his friends, about his wife Maureen, and his children, Jade and Scotty. Logan doesn't say anything and Wolverine asks, that bad, huh? Logan says that their futures are not the same. They're not going to be the same. He won't have to carry that burden. There is nothing that can be said that will help him. To be honest, it's safer the less he knows. Wolverine says that he can handle himself, and Logan tells him that he isn't worried about him. He's worried about those around him. Whenever he is finished with, well, whatever the hell he's doing, go back to the X-Men. They miss him. They need their Wolverine. And when he gets older and he finds someone that he deeply cares about, someone that he'd be willing to die for, be careful. Never stop fighting. Once he turns back on who he really is, once those claws are put away, that's when he'll lose it all. Just then, a chair is thrown into the wall and Wolverine laughs, stating, Speaking of fighting, should we? Old man Logan raises his beer and he tells him, It's not like we'll ever get another chance. The next morning in Forge's lab, Glob taps on a glass tube containing Maestro's head, stating that this is creepy. And Hawkeye asks why they're keeping Maestro's head. Forge says because Maestro is not dead. He's regenerating, but they can slow the process so that they can steady him. Given the number of times that he's gone berserk, the responsible thing to do would be to examine him in order to develop a Hulk-stopping weapon. 
Forge then pulls out a lever, activating the time machine, stating that they have about five minutes. Old Man Logan shakes his hand, telling him, That's more than enough, and once I'm through it, blow it up. No one goes to the wastelands. Jubilee hugs him, stating that she'll miss him. And Logan tells her, I'll miss you too. Tell Shogo goodbye, okay? Cecilia then hugs him, telling him that she isn't going to lecture him, but to make sure that he takes care of himself. No more regenics. Please, just be careful. Logan then turns to shake Hawkeye's hand, but Hawkeye jumps on him. No, oh, bro, we're hugging it out. For what it's worth, it was an honor fighting alongside you. Believe it or not, you're much easier to get along than your younger self, who's, you know, still pretty old. As Glob says his goodbyes, he asks why they have to leave. Why not just stay here? Logan laughs, telling him because this isn't his home. I need to go back to where I belong. And Glob hugs him. I'll miss you. And Logan tells him, I'll miss you too, Glob. Forge calls out that they don't have much time, and Logan tells him, All right, I'm ready. Thanks for everything, everyone. Forge tells him that he's happy to have it done, and when he gets over to the other side, they should meet up. As Logan begins to walk through, everyone watches, and Jubilee says, Goodbye, old friend. And a few moments later, Logan steps through, the machine exploding, leaving Logan in his old world, the Wasteland. As the blistering sun beats down on Logan, he sees a town off in the distance. The first real thing that he's seen in the past few days. Logan shuffles his way down and a group of men ask him what he's doing living out in the desert. Logan asks, where is here? A mutant in the group begins to laugh, telling him that this dude is more drunk than old man Manfredi. Ha! Logan pops his claws, grabbing the man, asking, Again, where am I? The mutant yells that he doesn't need to be so violent. This is the lizard's kingdom. Florida, of course. But one of the fat men of the group grabs a pipe, cracking Logan in the back, telling him that he just walked into the wrong part of town if he thinks he's going to threaten them. Each of the men begin to gang up, stomping and hitting him, when suddenly a leg goes flying. The larger man says that he's going to pay for that, but just like his friend, as he winds up, his arm is cut off. Logan gets back up, covered in the blood of the backwater men, and he presses the backside of his claws against the fat man's face, stating that the truck over there, he's gonna take it. The fat man nods, telling him that the keys are in the ignition, just, just don't kill them. Logan gets in the car, turning the keys, and he roars out of town. The man with the now missing leg says that he can't believe that they just let him go like that, but old man Manfredi comes out stating that they got off easy. That was Wolverine. One of the meanest sons of bitches to ever walk this earth. Man's killed more men than cancer. Way you poked him, you're lucky that he ain't killed you. Now stop crying. We're gonna call up Doc Connors about those missing limbs. Where Logan currently is, it'll be about a week's drive to get back home to Sacramento. Maybe two, depending on any hangups along the way. Which of course, there will always be hangups. Gotta fend off the wannabe bad guys of this generation. But as Logan drives through Kaiser, he crosses the bridge and runs over a landmine, blowing up him and the car. Time passes and Logan begins to wake up, seeing a man hovering over him with a knife and a strip of meat hanging from his mouth, telling him, Hey now, fella, don't get any funny ideas. Logan asks, what are they doing? And as the man slices into Logan, the crazed man says, I'm just getting myself a little meat over here. Lots of flavor in the bicep. Logan struggles in his restraints. You're wearing my jacket. The man chews on the meat, telling him, That's the least of your problems, buddy. We're not just planning on eating you. You're one of those mutants that can heal himself up. Wolverine, some people are saying. We're planning on selling you, but money ain't food. The way you keep healing up new meat, that'll be more valuable than money. So we're going to keep you instead. In a haze, Logan asks, How long? The man walks off, asking, How long have you been here? Or how long are we keeping you? Because you only been here about a week. And as long as we're keeping you well, we ain't ever going to let you go. Weeks go by and the crazed man holds a town meeting telling everyone that the Lord has blessed them with the gift of this endless supply of meat. Finally ending their years of hunger, ending their need to hunt, to kill. To him, to Wolverine, they show their gratitude. Several of the villagers crowd around taking pieces off of Logan, all thanking the Lord and him for providing. And under his struggled breath, Logan tells them, I'm gonna kill you all. The leader says, now, now, let's dig in. Everyone begins to cut into Logan, taking off bits and pieces here and there. But just then there's a loud sound and Logan hears it before anyone else, a low rumble that's getting louder. 
Suddenly, an armored car comes plowing through the villagers' homes, skidding to a stop before Logan. A woman gets out wielding a pair of bolt cutters, knocking out everyone in range while someone green smashes their way through. As the woman takes out the last man, she looks at Logan, stating, It really is you. She clips the chains, holding him in place, and as he falls to the ground, he looks up to see that it's Danny Cage. Ain't you a sight for sore eyes? Mind giving me a hand here? She leans in and punches him, asking, Where the hell have you been? Seven years! You've been gone for seven years! We thought you were dead! She kicks him in the stomach, going on telling him that he just ran off while she was left to raise Bruce Jr. alone. Logan rolls over, holding his arms out, stating, All right, all right, time out for a second. These bastards have been stripping meat off me for weeks. I'm not interested in getting into the beating right now. Just get me, get us out of here, I'll explain everything. Danny helps him up, repeating, Seven damn years. And Logan pulls his jacket off of the cannibal leader, asking, How did you even find me? She tells him that he left a trail of bodies all the way back to Lizard's kingdom. Word gets around. But after what they did to the Red Skull, there's still a lot of people looking for him. And if they found him, so can they. Back at the Lizard's kingdom, a blonde man begins to walk into town. The same group of men as Logan, stating, Well now, you four lumps look like you might have found yourself on the wrong side of a stubby, angry Canadian. The men say that they don't want any trouble, but the blonde man tells them that he wants to know who that man was that took their arm and leg. Fat man says, yeah. Before we say anything, we need to be compensated for having our truck stolen. The blonde man spits, stating, I'll cut you a deal. You tell me, and I'll only kill Lizard Boy here. You don't tell me, and I'm going to kill all four of you. A stitched up, patchworked saber tooth pulls out his metal hand, stating, And I can assure you, I'm a lot meaner than Logan. Later, outside of Kansas City, Logan says that he appreciates the save back there. He couldn't take much more of being an all-you-can-eat meat buffet. Not how he imagined spending his twilight years. Not sure where they're heading to, but if they're going to Sacramento. Danny stops him, telling him that Sacramento's a no-go. Carson City, too, they'll be looking there. Logan asks, who? And Danny says a lot of people. He's been gone a long time. People came out of the woodwork looking for Bruce Banner. When people found out that one of the Hulks was still around, not just a Hulk, but a baby Hulk, people came looking for him. Not because of what the family did, but because of what he'd grow up to be. He's still young and can be shaped into whatever people want him to be. After Red Skull was killed, there was a power vacuum. The last seven years, everyone's been climbing over each other to be the new top dog. Some people thought that if they had their own gamma-irradiated destruction machine, that maybe their competition wouldn't stand a chance. And then there's the others that want to kill Bruce. They see it as a way to keep themselves safe, to make sure that no one uses Bruce Jr. as a weapon. Meanwhile, back in Kaiser with the cannibals, Sabretooth holds up the leader who tells him, We already told you, we don't know where Logan went. Sabretooth throws the man against the wall and the man gets up shouting, That man could regenerate meat. If we knew where he went, we'd be following him. Sabretooth scoffs. You really are cannibals, huh? Thought maybe that was a myth. The man smiles. We have a right to eat. Don't you judge us. Sabretooth kneels down. Hey, no judgment here. You gotta do what you gotta do. But maybe, just maybe, you might not be telling the whole truth. So we're gonna test that. Bring that one. One of the soldiers pushes another villager forward and Sabretooth chomps down, ripping a chunk out of the man's neck. He then spits it out. Little too gamey for me. Maybe he wasn't quite ripe. Should I try another? See if someone else here is more tender? The cannibal tells him, no, please, uh, I'll talk, I'll talk. Later that night in Kansas City, Logan and Danny stop at a rundown mall, and Logan comes back from scavenging, stating that he found granola bars, a couple cans of stewed tomatoes, and gum. Danny tells him that it's better than nothing, but he's gonna tell them where the hell he's been for the last seven years. Logan sighs, telling her that he really doesn't know how it happened. I was shuttling between worlds or dimensions or whatever, and when I finally stopped, I was in New York, 50 years in the past, before all of this. Danny says, if you don't want to tell us, just say so. And Logan says, I am telling the truth. Everyone was alive. The X-Men were alive. Danny asks him, yeah? If that's true, why the hell would you come back? Because as good as it felt, it never felt quite right. They had their own Logan. He was dead, so someone had to fill that role. But I always felt like I was just keeping the seat warm. Like, I was never their real Logan to them. I was always the other one. Danny asks, so you walked away from all of that because you were having an identity crisis to this? Logan tells her, The reason I came back is because I'm dying, and if I'm going to die, I want to be here. To be buried with Maureen, Jade, and Scotty. She gets up hugging him. I... I didn't know that. I didn't know that you could die. Logan tells her, It's okay. I lived a long, long time. It's overdue. 
As Danny opens her eyes, she realizes that they weren't keeping an eye on Bruce Jr., and now the young Hulk has walked off. The two start to search, and Logan asks where would he have gone to without saying a word, and Danny says that in case he hasn't noticed, Bruce isn't a big one for talking. He's smarter than anyone, though. Chews through two or three books a day. But unless he's asking for food or books, he doesn't have any interest in conversation. Logan then says, If it's books, the kid's after. We did pass a library on our way in, across the road from the mall. Meanwhile, on the other side of the road, Bruce punches his way through a group of followers as they all try to jump on him. One of them yells to contain him until Father Eaton gets there, but Bruce throws them out the window. Outside, Logan and Danny examine a body when suddenly the follower that Bruce throws lands and gets splattered across the pavement. Danny sighs, stating, Oh, great, these guys. Logan asks, Who are these guys? She runs into the library, stating that these guys call themselves the Tranquility Temple, a weird-ass cult that is on the side of killing Bruce to make the world a better place. Bruce smashes another follower as Danny fights her way through the crowd, yelling to Bruce that if he wanted a new book, he should have just asked instead of wandering off. The followers all pile on to Logan, telling him that their business is not with them. It's with the child monster. Logan punches, stating, Then you're gonna have to go through me first. And just then, Father Eaton stands before a giant tube, stating, it will not be a problem, for the Lord has blessed us with a weapon from one of the Hulk's oldest rivals. A weapon designed with one holy purpose. Behold, the Hulk Killer! The tube opens, and the leader's old, giant, pink, Hulk-killing machine steps out, with Danny asking, what the hell is that thing? The Hulk Killer slams Bruce into a wall, and as Bruce punches back, his arm gets absorbed into the fleshy exterior of the machine. As the Hulk killer continues to pound into Bruce, Logan claws his way through and tells Danny to get Bruce out of here. I'll handle this! Danny quickly helps Bruce up and makes a break for the windows, leaving Logan alone with the Hulk killer. Logan hacks at the exterior, trying to slow it down, but the Hulk killer punches into Logan's chest, ripping out his lungs. As he falls to the ground, Eaton yells, That's it! Good work, Hulk killer! Now, do not waste time. Find the child Hulk and kill him! A few moments later, a follower holds a rifle to Danny's head, and she tells him that when she gets loose, he's going to be eating that gun! Eaton says that he knows who her parents were, and he can only assume that her skin is as bulletproof as theirs was. But rest assured, the weapon pointed at her does not fire bullets. It fires a blast of nuclear radiation that would melt her into a pile of human goo. So please, keep quiet. Back inside, Logan drags himself through the window. Danny and Bruce escaped. His lungs have hardly grown back enough to make him effective. As his skin begins to turn blue, he coughs up blood, looking down at Bruce and the Hulk Killer. Danny shouts for him to run, but the Hulk Killer grabs Bruce by the neck, slamming him back into the ground. Logan stands up, shouting as loud as he can that he isn't done yet, and as he throws himself out the window, Eaton asks, Can't you see what we're trying to do? Surely you of all people know what that thing is capable of, Logan! What would your wife and child think of you protecting the spawn of the monster that brutally slaughtered them? Logan rips into the Hulk Killer, wheezing, telling him not to talk about them. And the Hulk Killer punches it back with every swipe that Logan throws. But the Hulk Killer stumbles back onto a lamppost during one of the attacks. Logan jumps back up onto it, asking, I wonder what it's going to do with a couple hundred thousand volts running through it. As Logan falls over, Eaton grabs the rifle, stating, I will just have to end this myself for the good of the world! Danny pushes the follower, holding her off, charging in, punching Eaton, stating, You don't get to make that choice! Logan slowly gets back to his feet, asking, How is he? Danny helps Bruce up, stating, Bad, real bad. Logan then says that he knows someone in South Dakota. He can help. Just gotta deal with these punks first. The next morning, Logan and Danny drive into the Badlands with Danny asking where they're going. Logan tells her to just keep driving, they'll find them first. And at that moment, three large bipedal mechs step out with one stating that they are trespassing turn back. Logan gets out stating that they can't do that, they got a kid in bad shape. Take us to your leader. So a short while later, inside of a medical room, Bruce lays out on a table with Danny asking how much does he know about these people. Logan says not much, he heard rumors that a friend is holed up here. For their sake, let's hope it's true. Just then the door opens and a voice says, Damn, Logan, you got old. As Forge walks in with his cane, Logan tells him that he ain't no spring chicken either. Forge laughs, telling him that he met his lovely wife Eleanor already. But look at her, Jessica and Luke's kid all grown up. Danny asks, did you know them? Forge says, I met him a few times, back when you were just a baby. But don't worry about baby a Hulk here, the scans show that he's going to be fine. Whatever run he had left a bunch of nanites inside of him. Pretty smart, too. They're attacking him from the inside out, destroying tissue as it heals. We gotta pick them out and destroy them one by one. Kid's a fighter like his old man. He'll be running around in a day or two, tops. 
Danny says that they don't know how to thank him, and Forge pulls Logan aside, stating that she can thank him by letting him steal Logan here. They got some catching up to do. As the two leave, Forge says that it's been far too long for this reunion. He knows what happened at the mansion on the night the heroes fell. Logan begins to state that he doesn't want to talk about it, but Forge tells him he knows. After everything, when the smoke cleared, he went back to the mansion and looked through the security footage. He knew that Mysterio made him do those things. Guy even monologued about it. Can't imagine the guilt on his shoulders. Just wanted to let him know that he knows the truth. Logan sighs, telling him that he appreciates it, but Forge goes on stating that after that, he came here. He knew that there was no way that he could fight the villains on his own, so he figured he would build a place where people would be safe, somewhere defensible, if need be. They've had a good 50 years of relative peace. And as the pair go through a set of doors, Forge motions over to the man behind the desk, stating that this is his assistant, Dwight Barrett. Smart kid, runs a security program here. Found him modifying one of Ant-Man's helmets himself. He's even fixed the damn thing. The things that he can do with tech. Logan shakes his hand, stating that they've met before, and Dwight asks, Have we? Logan tells him, yeah. Charged him and his friend 80 cents to cross the bridge. Dwight laughs, ha, I did used to do that. I just don't remember you. As the two continue, Forge states that he would like to offer for Wolverine to state, but he knows that it's not like him to settle down. That much hasn't changed in nearly 60 years. Logan tells him, Yeah, but Danny and Bruce Jr., they can't be left alone. They've been on the run for seven years. I just want to make sure that they stay safe. Forge tells him not to worry, plenty of room here. They can always use an extra set of hands. Then a timid voice calls out from a small glass chamber. L -l 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 logan is, is it really you? Logan asks if that's Speedball, but Speedball tells him to call him Robbie now. Logan asks, what is this? And Forge tells him that the kinetic energy inside of Robbie has been building up for decades. He's supercharged. One bounce and boom, he'll be a nuclear bomb. Just in case you're worried about them keeping the human equivalent of a 20 kiloton bomb in the compound, well, don't be. The room is padded and rigged with sensors. If it even looks like he's going to trip, it shuts off the gravity. No gravity, no bounce, no bounce, no boom. Robbie asks, y yeah. No, nothing nothing to worry about. You you sticking around, Logan? Logan tells him, Nah, I popped in for a visit. I'll be gone in a few days. But it was good to see you. A few days later, Logan begins to load up his car, and Danny asks if he's sure about this. He just got back. Logan tells her that he's got to get back to Sacramento. He ain't going to last much longer, and when he goes, he wants to be with Maureen and the kids. So Danny hugs him, and Logan says goodbye. Thanks for everything. Logan then looks over at Bruce, stating, Don't go running off on Danny anymore. This place is safe. Bruce tells him, yeah, but I knew your dad. He was a good man. Always tried to do what was right, even if he wasn't successful. The world turned him into something else, made him angry, made him mean. Don't let that happen. At that moment, the alarms go off in the security room, and Dwight radios in that they have a breach. Forge asks if it's another herd of mule deer, and if it is, they could use some of the venison. Dwight tells him not unless he knows some mule deer who know how to ride motorcycles. Outside, Sabretooth leads his massive army to Forge's door, telling everyone, Grab the target and kill everyone else. As Sabretooth's soldiers begin to storm the compound, Forge and Eleanor get in their mech with Logan stating, I want to help. And Eleanor tells them that he should. This is his mess after all. Logan tells them, Look, they're after for me. Just let me. But Forge tells them that this isn't their first attack, and it won't be their last attack. A giant metal door slowly begins to open, and Logan jumps up onto Forge's suit as Forge says, All right, let's see what we're up against. Right outside of the gate, Eleanor punches one of the soldiers with Forge stating, Damn, Weapon X, heard someone started this up again. Logan slices through one of the soldiers, but he can smell it. Sabertooth, and there's more, something rotten. These soldiers' healing factor ain't for crap. Danny tells Bruce Jr. that everything is going to be okay. She's going to go out there and help, and she'll be back before he can even finish his book. Two books at the most. Bruce tells her that he wants to go out and smash, but as the door opens, Sabretooth walks in asking, Why don't I just babysit her for a while? One of the soldiers fires a trank dart into Bruce with Danny punching Sabretooth, telling him that she is going to take that dart and stick it right up his... Sabretooth laughs. laughs. You got some bite in you, girl. That's good. I like them feisty. Back outside, Logan calls out that these are just clones of Sabretooth. I killed that bastard a long time ago. Cut him up into a thousand pieces, and I buried them separately so that he couldn't regenerate. Forge fires into the group, stating that he may have just created a thousand Sabretooth seedlings. Logan stabs into one of the clones, asking, 
Is that what this is about? A bunch of squirts running around trying to get some form of revenge? The clone bursts out laughing, telling him, You are so stupid! We don't even care about you no more! You're just a distraction so that we can get the kid! Logan rips his claws out, shouting, Damn it! We need to! Well, before he could finish, Danny runs out swinging a hammer, yelling, They got Bruce! We can't let them get away! Just then, a giant truck bursts out of the wall, and driving it is Sabretooth. He calls up his boss, telling him that he got the package. Yeah, don't worry. We hit him with enough drink to stop a T-Rex on steroids. Kid ain't going nowhere. Danny yells that they have to go, and Ford shouts that they will handle this. Go! If they've got their hands on a Hulk, then this problem goes beyond us. As Logan and Danny run after the car, Forge continues to fire, stating, I'll see you guys in the next life. He then knocks one of the clones off of Eleanor's suit as he sounds the alarms. Code Black. Everyone in the safe house. The alarms begin to go off inside, and Robbie's containment pod opens. A few seconds later, Logan and Danny rocket out of the hangar, with Dwight asking, Where the hell are we going? Forge tells him not to worry. He needs to get to the bunker. The walls will protect him from what's about to happen. Dwight yells, hell no, I ain't running, and then he gets stabbed by one of the clones. Forge tells him to go. We need someone like you if we have any hope of survival. Even if we win here, this body ain't gonna last too long. You need to be there to lead. But up above it all, Robbie looks down, seeing the fighting. Oh, no. Over in the bunker, Forge helps Dwight into a bed, telling him that the wound isn't bad. Just a few stitches, but he's begging him, don't come back out, they need him. As Dwight is set, he tells Forge, thanks for everything, and Forge laughs. Ha <laughs> ha, no problem. Engage lock, 48 hours. When Forge goes back out to the fight, Eleanor tells him that they are the last one. Everyone is inside. And Forge says, not quite. Look. The two see Robbie standing alongside the mountainside with Forge kissing Eleanor. I love you. Sorry that it ends this way. And she tells him, at least we're together. Robbie looks down, plugging his nose, and he steps over the ledge. A few moments later, there is an earth-shattering kaboom as the power of 20 kiloton bombs go off. As the rumble catches up to Logan, he looks back at Danny asks, Did they? And Logan tells her, It's gone. We should have stayed. Danny yells, No, if we had stayed, we'd be dead too. I'm sorry about your friend, but if we died, who'd save Bruce Jr.? The next morning in Hammer Falls, formerly Las Vegas, Logan and Danny get out of the car with Danny asking if this is the right place. Logan says that Forge said that Sabretooth was with Weapon X and that they're working out of Hammer Falls. Only lead that they've got. So Danny then asks, Do we split up? And Logan tells her that that's never worked. We stick together. We figured this out. People here are obsessed with capes and crap. Ain't no way that Weapon X has laid roots in this hellhole without these folks taking notice. Danny stops by one of the heroes' stands and says that they're trying to find. The man yells, Holy crap! That's the Wolverine! Logan tells him, Look, we're not trying to cause a scene here, we just need information. The man runs out into the street yelling for everyone to come look. Wolverine is here, he ain't dead! Soon the crowd surround the two of them and a large man with a machete says that this guy is just an old man. Not gonna let that much cash walk out of here. But as he gets ready to swing, Danny punches him asking, Where's Sabretooth? The man yells, Please, please no more, I'll talk! Later that night at the Weapon X facility, Logan and Danny sneak in, taking down a pair of guards. And as Logan stabs one, and Danny whispers to the other one that he is going to tell them where they're keeping their green friend. If not, then he's going to end up like a kebab like his pal over here. You want to be a kebab? Do you? The clone guard shakes his head, telling him no, and he points them in the right direction. They take out another set of guards, and Logan cuts the hand off of one to use for the bio scanners that are up ahead. As the doors open up, Logan says that they need to get Bruce Jr. and get the hell out of here. Won't be long before someone discovers the bodies. But as the doors open, Sabretooth tells them, Oh, they already know. We've been watching the whole time. Figured we'd look at our security and see where the holes are. So thanks for that. Just so you know, the bullets in those guns are the same type that the Reavers use to shoot down Luke Cage. Not sure if a little girly has her daddy's skin, but a little overkill is better than not being prepared. Sabretooth walks up to Logan and tells him, if you think about popping those claws, then we're gonna fill Baby Banner here with so much gamma radiation, he'll explode like a green tomato! Logan says, I've killed you once before. I look forward to doing it again. What is it you want? Sabretooth tells him that he's waiting on the boss man to show up, and as he finishes, another set of doors open up, and a strained old voice says, Logan! Sabretooth asks, You remember Mr. Sinister, right? Sinister rolls out in a wheelchair, half decaying and bloated. It's been a while. You were the crown jewel of what we were originally after. 
And when we found out that you had a Hulk with you, <laughs> that changes things. See, with Creed, their clones were subpar. But a Hulk? That's like having a walking, talking nuclear bomb. Do you know what Red Skull gave me after he presented the blueprint for all of this? Nothing! The Nazi took all the credit! Even that nobody, Paste Pot Pete, got his own town. But that all changes. Anyway, gods, take Logan into custody and kill the girl. Everyone points their guns at Danny, and she quickly elbows one of them with Logan popping his claws, cutting the restraints, holding Bruce Jr. down. And he looks at him. All right, Bruce, smash! As the three punch their way out, Sabretooth yells to stop them. But when they see their escape truck, Danny asks, what, do you think they just left the keys in it? Logan jumps into the cab, jamming his claws into the ignition, asking, have you never hotwired a car before? A few seconds later, the truck races out of the compound with Sabretooth and his clones following closely behind. Sabretooth yells to take out the tires, and one of the clones leans up with an RPG. As the rocket is fired, he shoots through the air and into the back of the truck, blowing it up and flipping everyone over. As everyone crawls out of the truck, Logan coughs. <coughs> so much for that plan. Danny asks what are they supposed to do, they're outnumbered, and Logan tells her, That has never stopped me before. One of the citizens runs up telling Sabretooth that they cannot be here. This is the sacred ground of Mjolnir. Sabretooth knocks the guy down. I've met Thor before. Wasn't that great? Kind of full of himself. Logan stands in front of Danny and Bruce stating that he'll give himself up. But the girl and the kid walk. Sabretooth tells him, yeah, that's a no-go. Kill the girl and take the other two. One of the clones fires and as everyone stops, Danny looks at her bleeding chest, telling them that she'll be fine. She'll be. Sabretooth yells to Logan, this is on you. You caused this. As Danny falls back, she lands next to Mjolnir and then the hammer falls over. Everyone shouts asking if they saw that. Their prayers have been answered and Danny reaches for the handle when suddenly there's a bolt of lightning. Oh, hell no! And Danny stands up as the new Thor. Oh, hell yes! Sabretooth groans asking, Cause somebody kill her already! As Danny and Bruce charge in, Logan takes out his last vial of Regenix. He injects himself. This is it. But taking a lot of beatings, but this is it. One last shot at being what I once was, at being the best that there is. While Danny and Bruce handle the clones, Logan jumps over the crowd right for Sabretooth, telling him, We did this once before, and I won! The two exchange blow after blow, ripping and tearing into each other until they're both a bloody mess. Sabretooth punches into Logan's chest, telling him, I've been praying for a day that I could do this. Thanks for making this little boy's dream come true, Logan. Logan tells him, I wouldn't be running the victory lap just yet. And then he punches into Sabretooth's throat. As the second set of claws go in, Logan screams, ripping Sabretooth's body to bloody chunks. Danny runs over to help Logan up, stating, We'll get thou chariot so that your healing factor will work its magic. Logan laughs, You got the accent and everything, but I'm done for. Just the last of the Regenex and that barely did anything. No more healing. Knew it was gonna happen sooner or later. Just that Sinister rolls out yelling, You will give me my green little bastard back before? Before he could finish, Danny tells him that she thinks not, throwing Mjolnir obliterating Sinister's head. We get back into their car, Logan says to remind him to never make her mad. She says that he may jest, but his situation is dire. They must get him medical assistance before. Logan tells her, No, I'm far too gone. Just, just get me home, please. Later, just outside of Logan's ranch, Danny pulls up and Logan asks, Do you mind helping me over to Maureen and the kids? My legs, I won't be able to make it on my own. Without saying a word, Danny and Bruce get up and they help Logan over to the grave markers of his family. As they set him down, Danny says that they'll be close by if he needs them. And as they walk away, Logan calls to them. Wait, Bruce, I'm sorry I left you. I truly am. I don't suppose that makes much difference, but I thought you should know. Take care of Danny for me, okay? And you, Danny. Your parents would be so proud of the person that you've become. I wish that they could have been here to see you. She kneels down. Thank you. Maureen, Jade, and Scotty would be proud of you too, Logan. As Danny and Bruce leave, Logan shuffles closer to the grave, picking up a picture that was left behind, stating, <laughs> I've thought about this for a long time. Though, that may be why I left here. So I could move on. But every time I closed my eyes, all I could see was the three of you. I wasn't sure if I'd ever make it back here. I almost gave up on it. But any time that I thought that way, any time that I was ready to give up, 
I thought about the farm. Logan wipes the tears off of his face. No matter how tough life got for me, no matter how little we had, we always had each other. I've never been happier in my entire life. I love you all so much. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I didn't fight for you sooner. I'm sorry I wasn't there when you needed me most. I'm sorry I let you down. I, I just hope that when I see you, you can forgive me. Please. Logan reaches out to touch the marker, and as the last of his tears stream down his face, he falls back. He looks up into the sky, and he takes a deep breath, and he fades away. Later that night, Danny buried Logan with his family, and as she finishes, she says that it's hard to believe. She really thought that he would live forever. When she was a kid, Wolverine was indestructible, and now wherever he's gone, she hopes that he has finally found peace. Bruce hugs Danny. Don't be sad. We still have each other. And Danny tells him, thanks. I needed that, Bruce Jr. Logan wouldn't want us standing here feeling sorry for him. He'd want us to continue our lives. He'd want us to keep fighting and stop running. And now, it's time for us to find somewhere to call home. And with that, Old Man Logan passed on. And there you have it, the conclusion to the Old Man Logan saga. Now I'll tell you guys right now, a few months from now, we're probably gonna do a life and death of Old Man Logan and grab all of the Old Man Logan centric videos. It'll probably be like a five hour video, but I hope you guys enjoyed this and please check us out every Monday for another full story right here. I'll see you guys next time, thank you.